Welcome to Channel AMAC, your insight to the Australian visa system. G'day everyone, my name is Carl Young, your migration agent online in the cloud. Today, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the viewers uh, for giving us all the subscriptions and the thumbs ups. Uh, now, I miss out, I noticed that I missed out one of the visa category, which I would like to discuss and share with you today, which is the Employment Sponsored Working Visa under the subclass 482. It's a very commonly ask and inquired visa category uh, for Australia visas. Now, the reason is there has been a lot of uh, foreign workers and skills and professionals uh, require uh, to actually pump the economy of Australia. Now this visa from my view I'll dissect it into two. Now one is how the criteria were actually set for the sponsor and the other one is how the criteria is required to be set and to be met by the visa applicant. So let me and let's jump into it. Okay, now first of all, this is Australian Immigration's website which you will be able to find it easily um, via Google. What you're going to do is just type in homeaffairs.com.au maybe a space and then put 482 then you will be able to land in this page so as you can see uh, the page has uh, putting in sections of short-term stream and medium-term stream and labor agreement streams okay now I'm not gonna go into detail labor agreement stream today but I would like to discuss more about the short-term stream and medium-term stream so basically they are categorized into two different occupation lists now medium term string you can see here uh it's uh let me roll it up here it's it, it's available if your occupation is within the medium term string you'll be available after three years of work and transfer into permanent residency now short term string in another sense you cannot you can only renew update another working visa once it's finished or lapse but you will never be able to transfer into a permanent residency after years of work so uh, that's the only differences uh, and how would they differentiate that uh, Australian immigration does uh, changes the uh, contents of these occupation lists uh, generally uh, January of the year or July of the year. Okay, so let's jump into the short-term stream first. Now, before we do that, both stream require to have a standard business sponsor. Now, how do we and how do you know that your sponsor or yourself is able to sponsor someone? Basically, once you land into this page, if you see right underneath us of the pictures and underneath the picture there is a little radio button down there okay so let's click on that then you switch it to the sponsors page okay then once you hit that eligibility that will give you all the explanations of how an employer or business or company will be able to meet the standard business sponsor requirements so unless you, uh, unless you have this uh, sponsorship done you cannot nominate and the visa cannot be lodged or applied so have to have a, sp a standard business sponsorship uh, a, a validity available to actually be lodged so how do you meet that you you have to become again become a standard business sponsor and how do you become a standard business sponsor uh, we can click on and jump into it that basically tells you all the requirements so you have to be legally established and currently operating the business have no adverse information and additional requirement basically what it requires that I'll, I'll generally um, tell my client to provide is at least two years of financial statements and all the tax uh, documentation that including BAS that's the business activity statements or IAS as well so that can be all lodged to the immigrations to be uh, uh, to get that um, SBS what I call or standard business sponsorship uh, approved now after that once we come back let's jump in 
back to the sponsor one. Um, then you, once you get that, you nominate the worker under whatever the occupation that is. If it's gonna be in the short term, it's you will be in short term. It's, it, if it's in medium long term, it will be medium long term. And you have to show that you are unable to find an equal valid Australian worker. So by how they do that, it's called labor market testing. So again, it's very complicated process. Um, Obviously, the labor market testing uh, will require. Uh, let's let's come down here. We'll have all this detail in here. So uh, you you must um, have a copy of advertisement uh, material used of advertise and position must be provided. Okay, so it has to at least two advertisement in different type of media and has to be a pay advertisement it cannot be a free one you cannot just be uh, what you do on a lot of free media out there for example Facebook cannot be uh, it's not gonna be allowed uh, I mean the immigration will not take that okay so at least two down here advertising Australia in English you can't advertise this elsewhere because you this is what they call labor market testings uh, advertisement uh, including website and must be run at least four weeks Application or experience of interest that must be accepted at least four weeks. So you need to accumulate all the CV and resumes during these four weeks and have a report to be um, sent to the immigration. And you have to pay the annual market salary rate. And at the moment is um, uh, $53,900. Uh, and uh, obviously uh, that goes to different type of oc occupation has a different rate as well so it must be a genuine position of course you cannot create it so a restaurant uh, should not nominate uh, an accountant uh, and a, uh, a media company should not nominate a chef so this just doesn't make a sense so it has to be whatever the occupation or industry that, that you're in and nominate whatever the industry's occupational skills are required. Engagement or nominee under written contract has to have a written contract done. It cannot just be an offer. So it's getting very, very strict and cannot uh, engage any discriminatory practice. So meaning that um, you're treating the Australian workers better than treating an overseas worker. You cannot do that. Everybody has to be equal, okay? Uh, the employment condition has to be met uh, uh, for Australian workers again and no adverse information. Okay, so that's basically what the employees require to have. Now let's switch to the applicants. Okay, so the applicant has to be, if it's short term, uh, there's no age limit, no age requirement. Uh, and the holder has to be have an appropriate visa if they are in Australia. You can't have no visa or you cannot holding some sort of visa pending for uh, an appeal or hearing uh, and have complied previous visas conditions. You cannot breach previous visas condition. And again, of course, be nominated and working under your nominating employer. So it's just to not to have someone nominated on you and you put them somewhere else to work. You cannot do that, cannot do that, okay? And these uh, applicants will require to have relevant skill. Now, bear in mind, if your occupation is within, um, it's generally not require a uh, skill assessment, but see here, some applicant must undertake skill assessment just to demonstrate this uh, and and they are as below so we will get in there later on uh, and you have to have been working in your occupation for at least two years you need to show that you have been in those uh, jobs or, or, or work position for at least two years if you don't have any work experiences you cannot even launch and become an applicant now here the skill assessments Predominantly, if you have studying Australia, you or you have a Australian qualification, you're gonna require to have that. But mandatory skill assessment. If we if we click here, generally it shows predominantly all the traits. So traits, will, including chef, cook, uh, plumber, electricians, uh, carpenters. Uh, those one will require to have um, skill assessment. Now skill assessment is, uh, is has a validity of three years. Again, now. Uh, of course, you need to have health insurance uh, and health requirement character, blah, blah, blah. That's all goes on. So, and you have to need to have an English requirement. So minimum standards here, 
it's uh, for the short term uh, will be let's have a look um, it should be about aisles of level five let's have a look so short term stream if we go down here uh, you need to have at least five okay now if we go up to medium stream uh, you need to have a five as well but bear in mind uh, at the time of transferring into a permanent residency your English requirement has to be uh, incompetent with in, well in, in a competent level not incompetent okay so that's equal value to IELTS level of six across four bands now let's jump back to the immigration website down here let's go back uh, one steps and let's see how the medium term will be like I, I, I believe it will be almost identical apart from the occupation list so if we go to eligibility here again uh, no age required um, and you need to hold visas not breach visa condition you have to be nominated by a sponsor and the nominating um, employer uh, you have to be working under your nominee okay, again skill assessment qualification is required I have to have the two years uh, work experiences uh, skill assessment for the trades health insurance and looks like it's all identical so it's all the same so basically uh, today's video is about uh, employment sponsor working visa so it's under the subclass 482 uh, so there are two sections one is a requirement to become a standard business sponsor the other one is for the visa applicant now visa applicant does have two streams one comes into short term stream one is a medium term stream so the two how do you differentiate it it's from the occupation that you're going to choose or whatever the occupation that you are in anyway if you do have Further question or query, uh, more than welcome to leave a comment or send me an email, inquire um, within um, either Facebook or YouTube. And should you like our channel, consider to subscribe and I see you next video. Goodbye.